Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you today. We have another top 10 list and one that I wish was not so relevant right now. <laughs> this is my top 10 folders for the end of the world. No, I don't think we're going to get the end of the world. Uh, this is late April 2020. We're all still in the grips of this global pandemic thing. Um, but I think there's light at the end of the tunnel. I think we're all going to be relatively okay. We'll see, but that's kind of what I'm hoping in a month or two. Uh, but we'll see. Um, but no, it, it did kind of give us all a wake up call. I think uh, it definitely me. I thought I was pretty prepared. I think I'm still more prepared than a lot of my neighbors, uh, were and my, you know, my wife and my kids were impressed that I was pretty prepared for some stuff. So I think I'm fairly prepared, but I'm not as prepared as I could be. So subjects like this do kind of stick in my head. Uh, secondly, I want to say, obviously, take a fixed blade. If you have a really nice fixed blade, it, take that. If you're going to take one knife, and that's what this scenario is, one knife, I'm giving a top 10, but I'm not saying I'm taking all 10 of these. That would be a very heavy, pointless rucksack. So <laughs> I have I have uh, a wife and two kids. I'd probably distribute one to each of them. Uh, but no, I, I don't. I, this is just just one. If you're going to take just one, uh, take a fixed blade, obviously, but I don't own many good fixed blades. Kind of thinking now maybe I should. That's one thing that's come up with this, but these are just going to be folders because that's what most of my demographic is into. So these are just some really good, uh, not just hard use folders. I already did a video about that. These are more hard use folders to use when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So onto that, some of the things I thought about reliability, it was probably number one. So you're not going to see a whole lot of fancy locks on here. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of bearings. I think there's only one that runs on bearings because bearings do gum up. Uh, it's never been a problem for me in my daily life, but I think it might be more of a concern when you're just outdoors or in an urban environment or wherever you are using the same knife for everything all the time. It's going to get gummed up and you don't want to be having to take it apart all the time and service it. And serviceability is another another uh, factor of this. Uh, serviceability, as far as it, is it is it easy to take apart and service when you have to? Um, is the steel somewhat easy to sharpen? At least something you could sharpen on, you know, a, a ceramic mug or something like that. I, I prefer to have something like that when I'm out. Um, and not all these fit hit every single one of these requirements perfectly, but these are the things I thought about. Um, I said, yeah, can you field strip it, and repair a uh, full size? I want something pretty big. Uh, I don't want something uh, huge and gigantic necessarily. Like uh, I definitely could have put, you know, uh, Cold Steel Chris Voyager on here. You know, that, that definitely probably would work, I guess. But you know, that that blade is is kind of uh, kind of meant more for cutting sentient uh, material than it is, you know, <laughs> a normal kind of task you'd actually be doing. So that, you know, that one's not on the list. Versatility. That, that's another leads us to that one versatility it's just it's got to be something i can do more than one thing with absolutely for sure and a really strong lock that's that's why you're not seeing a lot of like fancy fidget locks and stuff because they work fine for 99 percent of tasks but stuff like this you know you're gonna want something really strong so let's get going three and a half minutes in here uh, these are in no particular order whatsoever and again i'd only be taking one these are just examples of ones that i would look at in in my collection i'm gonna i'm gonna get one out of the way because i know you guys are just waiting on it because i get accused of being a hinderer fanboy so let me just get one out of the way yes an xm18 would be high up on the list this one is running on bearings i would not run it on bearings that's one of the benefits of the the triway the triway pivot i can just switch it to phosphor bronze washers that's probably what i would do this happens to be a spear point in m390 they come in a whole lot of different versions Honestly, in this sort of situation, and one of the reasons why I brought this one up first is uh, some of the older ones are S35VN. Uh, I love M390 uh, when I have a nice sharpening system to come home to and sharpen it up. Uh, I would probably take a sharpening system with me if I ran that could handle the M390. But if I didn't have the opportunity to, in this situation, I'd almost rather have one of the old S35VNs. You can definitely, you know, keep them tuned up on, like I said, just like a ceramic coffee mug or something like that. It's, it's, you can find lots of stuff just laying around that you can keep them sharp with. It's not going to be a beautiful edge, obviously, but you can keep a good working edge with something like that on S35VN. I love S35VN for that purpose. It has very good edge retention, but super easy to sharpen, at least if you keep an eye on it and, and you know, keep it, 
keep it sharp, it'll it'll hold an edge for a really long time without much effort, but daily effort maybe, depending on your situation, but a minute instead of hours. So yeah, I would probably try to find an XM18 with the S35 VN and running it on phosphor bronze. And up to the point, I've almost kind of thought about hunting for an older XM18 and S35 and put phosphor bronze washers in it and leave it. Um, but other than that, a great freaking knife for, with those two caveats, a great freaking knife for this kind of situation. They're tough as nails, uh, lock as strong as can be. Uh, they, It's a full-size knife for sure, but it's not too big and ridiculous, you know, in your kit that it's going to weigh you down. And uh, the ergos, the imperfections in the ergos that I find in EDC use, I would probably very much appreciate in this sort of situation, because that's what these are kind of designed for. They're designed for first responders and people like that. So it completely makes sense. You know, when you're in this kind of situation, you get, you get why the ergos are the way they are. Um, I'd probably choose a choilless if I could find one. It, obviously, I would have to have shopped ahead <laughs> because they're hard to find. I'd probably find a no choil one just because it's a, it's a, you know, I know there's a no choil, uh, Warncliffe on DLT right now. So something like that, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I do just to get a little bit more blade, but I do love the XM18 and I, it would definitely be one that I would, I would think of. I would swap out the, 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 uh, bearings though. I would put, I would put the washers on it. Now, next up, I guess we'll do this one. This is the, uh, oh, by the way, these, I'm going to try to get prices on. These are, these start about 425 They are not inexpensive, but um, in this situation, we're probably not using dollars anymore. So I don't know. This is um, uh, uh, worth uh, three gallons of gas or maybe a uh, uh, three bags of Harry Bell gummy bears. I don't know. Um, next up, the only one I have here running on bearings, and that would be, the Microtech SOCOM Elite. Uh, the bearings on these are really, really, really sealed off. Um, I don't think it would be too much of a problem. There's no like rubber seals in them, but the way they're recessed and stuff, I think they'd probably be okay. And if they're not, as far as a knife that is easy to take apart and put back together and goes back together perfectly every single freaking time, it's the SOCOM. Uh, I did not take apart the first one that I had because it was a loner. This one is mine now. And I took it apart yesterday and I was so super impressed at how easy it was. You got to keep track of all these little screws wherever you are, but you take out those screws, it pops apart, it goes right back together. Uh, Nero Knives did a video on a disassembly of this. If you watch it, it's very eye opening because, uh, yeah, he's 100% right. You can take all the body screws off, it still stays, it still stays completely centered. Just just the pivot screw will hold it together perfectly fine. Uh, and then even if you take the body or the, take the pivot screw off and you hold it, it still stays centered and you put it back together. It's, it's super easy. Everything just drops right in place. The machining on these is just perfect as far as the tolerances go. And tiny little thing, but it makes that noise. I don't know if I was, if I was a marauder stumbling into your encampment, I've watched too many TV shows, and I heard this. I might think for a minute. Uh, they do come in different blade shapes. This is the Tanto. This is the one I would choose. Obviously, I chose this one for mine, but not for this purpose. But uh, yeah, I like that Tanto blade shape for this this kind of situation as well. You have you know multiple cutting edges. You can also use that little small bit there. I use it a lot for very small little kind of detail stuff. Um, it, or or things like opening packages. You're probably not going to get Amazon packages during the apocalypse, but I don't know. Who knows? Uh, Jeff Bezos is a very resourceful man. But uh, yeah, I, I really like the Tanto shape is what I'm getting at in a very long way. And it's also a really good full-size knife. Ergos are great. You can use this all day and not get tired of using it. And uh, in, in the apocalypse, no one is going to complain about it being tip down only. They probably will. Instead of YouTube commenters complaining about tip down, there's probably just going to be like a random guy who throws you a, a note, you know, written on on a small scrap of uh, of Rite Aid receipt that he found laying around. Because there's going to be Rite Aid and CVS receipts laying around still in the apocalypse. I'm positive of it. Uh, next up, we're going to do... Let's grab something a bit less expensive uh, because, again, I keep forgetting the prices. This is about uh, 270 to 290 for a basic one. You can spend uh, up to like nearly two grand on one of these if you want to get one of the Marfion custom versions. But next up, something much less expensive. 
Another one that makes a great sound, of course, an Ontario Rat Model 1. Why would I not put this on here? The Rat Model 1 is perfect. This is the D2 version. You're looking at about 35 to 50 bucks. If you want something that's even easier to sharpen, the Aus 8. Uh, this D2 is not something you're probably going to want to sharpen on a, you know, a chunk of ceramic you find laying around. But the Aus 8 is. Uh, and the os 8s are even cheaper uh, but ergos are awesome phosphor bronze washers again very reliable action uh, it is a liner lock but it's a very solid liner lock and i have no issues with that and again it makes it makes a good sound i don't know if that matters in the apocalypse or not but you gotta give it a little joy somewhere but ergos are great blade shape just simple drop point it's going to be great for a whole lot of things it is super versatile and yeah, of course a rat one is on here. It has to be. Of course it is. And yeah, again, these are about 35 to 50 bucks in the D2. I think they're even a bit less than the Aus 8. And it's just a, one of the biggest bargains, bang for the buck in the knife community. Always is, has been for a long time. Always shall remain so. Uh, next up is the Spider Co. Spidey Chef. Uh, it's not only great for what it's intended for. You are going to be cooking. It is called the Spidey Chef. It is intended for that kind of stuff. It's a great camp cook knife. It is absolutely awesome. LC200N, titanium, ceramic uh, detent ball. Runs on phosphor bronze wash. It's completely, completely corrosion resistant. I've proven it myself. This thing has spent a few hours in a salt bath. And it just holds up really well. Nothing ever corrodes on it. So you don't have to worry about that. I mean, I, when I, I'm not nice to this thing. When I clean it, it's like in the sink. It's not a big deal. And obviously, I don't clean it as often as I should. But uh, yeah, it it kind of almost goes in, not with the dishes, but using the same stuff. Uh, it's a comfortable knife to use in the in a normal kind of everyday sort of capacity. Remember, we're thinking about just having one. I think, yes, this is technically specialized towards the kitchen side, but it, it really isn't. Um, it, it really does still make a very good just usual task sort of knife and uh it's not quite as big and burly as some of the other ones on here but it is the corrosion resistance all that stuff you know about 234 you know they're not inexpensive they're not insane though um i have to say i, I really don't mind the price of the spidey chef if i know some spider coats get a bit overpriced i don't think this is one of them uh, the lc 200 i'm pretty easy to maintain uh not a big deal um yeah i just dropped it up on ceramic uh stones before so or ceramic rods before so so maybe Maybe you'll be fine on something, you know, like that, that cup scenario I'm talking about. But a uh, great knife, very reliable. Definitely Spidey Chef would be on the list. Um, what else are we going to do next here? I'm way off my list in the order that I wrote them. So we will bring out, of course, there's a cold steel on here. I could do the whole list of cold steels. There are a lot of cold steels that will be awesome in this situation. I narrowed it down to two, <laughs> but uh, this is the first one. It's it's a uh, one of the pricier ones, but still under two hundred bucks. The eighty ten. Uh, it's a big burly sucker. It has a triad lock, the toughest lock in the business. I've seen no reason to prove to, to disprove uh, Colt Steel's claims of that. I mean, you can you can hang a Volkswagen off of the thing and it's not going to break especially in this you got a big thick one it is definitely going to hold up great ergos you can choke up a little bit for more detail stuff it's a big knife absolutely for sure but it's not insane it really isn't and it carries okay uh it's it's not the best in the pocket but do you care about that at this point you know you're you're probably wearing you know Mad Max post-apocalyptic cargo pants so everybody has cargo pants in the apocalypse so uh, it, you're probably not going to care too much about that, but and it's it has a, some heft to it. It's S35 VN again, which I love. Like I said, for this situation, because you can you can field sharpen it. It is not a difficult steel to field sharpen at all. Uh, again, you're not going to get a pretty edge, but who cares about that at this point? And it's just it's again just that comfort. It's just something that you really want to use, and it is very 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 good in the hand. I'm not putting these in order, but this this might this might be it i'm not putting them in order but the the 8010 it might be the first one that i reach for i just and i just love the 8010 again triad lock nothing fancy it's pretty easy to take apart uh pretty easy service not too bad assuming you remember your torx wrenches remember your torx wrenches everybody when the apocalypse happens where's my knife and my torx wrenches uh 
Next up is going to be our first Spider Co. on the list. There are two of these as well. Um, the Native Chief. The most underrated Spider Co. I don't know why people don't talk about this more. They came out with this new large, you know, large blade folder. And people still talk more about the police for and the military. And this is better. It's I like this better. It's a nice, reliable backlock. Uh, S3V steel. Again, something you... You, you can feel it's a bit chippy but you can still feel you know take care of it in the field it's not too bad and it does it's not super hard so you can sharpen it up fairly easily uh the ergos are great very strong backlock spider coast backlock is very 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 strong they've been doing a whole lot of them for a long time everybody thinks about the compression lock but the backlock is uh that spider Q uses is very strong again you can choke up a little bit a lot of reach if, if you have getting a tactical sort of situation you know this and the uh you know this and the the silicon elite obviously are the two you'd probably want to have in your hand i that's the two of this list that i would think of maybe another one coming up uh but yeah it's just a very good versatile knife good leaf blade shape and tough as nails and also fairly lightweight if you are you know trying to move quickly that's something nice to have uh, i love the native chief and i just it just doesn't get the love that it should get uh next up another obvious the chris reeve sabenza this is the new 31 but any chris reeve sabenza uh, i would i would say no matter what blade shape whatever they are very very well built they are going to last they are very easy to take apart and maintain and again uh phosphor bronze washers and again s35 vn steel and it I mean, I guess the warranty doesn't apply anymore, <laughs> which is a great thing about Chris Reeve is they fix anything and you can send them back and restore the new. But I don't know, maybe you'll run into uh, Tim Reeve at some uh, post-apocalyptic encampment and you can, you know, trade him some some gummy bears or a Snickers bar or a song and he will uh, he'll do a spa treatment for you with what he has laying around. I don't know, maybe. That might be a thing that happens. I don't know. Don't worry about my brain. But you know, the other than the, the Sabenza has a lot of things going for it. Like I said, it's just dead simple. S thirty five VN. This is the uh, the regular drop point, which is a great blade shape, nice hollow ground. One of the only hollow ground blades on this, by the way. Uh, but it's still a pretty robust hollow grind. I wouldn't worry about chipping it or damaging it or anything like that. And. Uh, and it is still fun to play with, especially in the 31. So it's got that tiny little, tiny little thing for it. That's not a priority, but it doesn't hurt when it has it, right? Yeah. Do really think this Benza is, is a pretty obvious choice. It's very expensive, though. These are $425. Um, oh, by the way, I think I skipped the uh, native cheap price. They're $168. they are not too bad. Uh, next up, we have, what order we can do these last three? Next up would be a knife that is a bit on the smaller side, but one that I think really, really would work in this situation. Perhaps if all four of us are running away, I would give it to my daughter. No, not my daughter. She's she's six feet tall. She doesn't need a small knife. Um, uh, maybe my wife. Uh, this is the Southern Grind Spider Monkey. Uh, S35VN. Phosphor Bronze Washers. You do see a pattern here, and you should. Uh, really good ergos. Very tough blade. It's not super thin behind the edge. It's not a great slicer, but it's going to be really, really good for heavier duty use stuff, and I just really freaking like it. And it would be a little bit of my former home uh, that is now in cinders, I'm assuming. Things are getting dark, uh, so it, it has that going forward. This is the carbon fiber handle version. There are others. Uh, they're about 220, but uh, this... You don't have to get the carbon one, obviously. Who cares at this point? But there are other scale versions available that are slightly cheaper. Not dramatically cheaper, but you're looking right around that $200 mark. Uh, but just a very well-built knife. Good, good, solid blade stock. It's it's going to hold up well. And it's a very versatile knife. Again, not that big. You'll get, what, three and a quarter inch blade. But uh, but still, it pushes that full-size boundary. But it's more of a mid-size, I guess. But this is the smallest knife I would probably grab and go running with. So from the smallest one to the biggest one, I think you guys knew it was coming. And I'm going to have to justify this one. The Cold Steel Formax Scout. Or any Formax, honestly. Uh, regular Formax is what, 300 bucks, something like that. This is 115 uh, It is heavy, 10.2 ounces. If you're worried about weight, 
not an option, but you do have this very large triad lock. It ain't going to fail. If this lock breaks, you have infinitely more important things to worry about. Uh, it is OS 10A steel. Again, something that should be fairly easy to uh, service in the field. Uh, and again, a pretty easy to take apart and work on. Ergos are amazing. Uh, and it is just a big intimidating sucker, which I don't think is the worst thing in the world to have at this time. It does carry better than you would think it would. Uh, the weight is the only real thing that holds it off. I can actually put this in a pocket and still get into that pocket completely fine, which really surprised me. I find myself carrying this a lot more than I expected to with a belt. Make sure you bring a belt during, during the end of the world. And I just... I just really like it, and I think it would work extremely well in this situation. There's nothing really to go wrong. You can't get much more simple than this. Um, and again, easy to take care of, and it can just it can just do a whole lot. And it cuts much better than you think it would. It is not just a it's not just like a pure big choppy thing. It actually does slice fairly decently. You notice I have no pure slicers on here like I do in my daily life, which is the stuff that I usually like to carry. But in this kind of situation, I don't think I'm going to be worried quite as much about about how well it slices through a sheet of paper. Uh, although this will still do that. So uh, I, yeah, four max of some sort, if you have the bigger, the more expensive one, that's a lot lighter than this and is um, S35 VN and titanium, that's even better. Uh, but this is the one that I have and it's the one that I would grab. And lastly, I know you guys are waiting for this one. I'm sure that all the Spyderco fans are in there already in the comments asking me because they didn't bother to watch the end of the video. The PM2. This is the only one with kind of a fidgety lock on it. The compression lock, though, is still really strong. It's been well proven over a very long amount of time. And I would not choose this version of the PM2. This is the crew wear. Uh, well, I, I probably would because it's the one I have, and the crew wear one is nice, but you can't get them. Uh, this is the Knife Center exclusive crew wear with the Smooth G10. I actually, I'd probably rather have the Grippy G10 in this kind of situation than the Smooth G10, even though I love it for EDC purposes. Uh, but some form of PM2. Uh, depends on the steel, how easy it's going to be to sharpen. Uh, the S30V one won't be very bad. There is an S35 one, S35VM one floating out there somewhere. If you can find one of those, that's probably not a, that's a probably really good shout. That's probably the one that I would choose. Um, wow, this video just become a love letter to S35VM. That was not the intention, but yeah, I just, I, it's a, it's a great knife. It's definitely tough enough. It's definitely big enough. Uh, it definitely will do a whole lot of things. Uh, as the name would indicate, paramilitary too. It does have some a pretty good tactical function and things, if things come down to that. And, uh, yeah, the PM2 has got to be on the list. So, and, and that is the list. That is the end of the list. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to keep talking about it down below and, uh, have a good one and stay safe out there where it's not the end of the world. We're going to be okay, but uh, especially if you just wash your damn hands. That would help out a lot. I've been Brian. Have a good one.